Hello everyone. So this is the uh, tutorial about how to create tiles in Blender by using the particle system and uh, the geometry node. So I have to do this for my personal project, which I think it may be useful for you to know how to scatter geometry more universally, more uniformly. So Let's take the cylinder as example. First one is like I create a cylinder and I create some more even topology on top of that, which means add more poly loops. And after that, I go to the particle system, just create a particle too. And we have to switch the default setting to the hair system, which here you can see is not generally hair based on the surface. But we have to move this generate from the surface to the points, which means like each hair is spawned at the point location. So in the render setting, if I pick the tile mesh that I want to scatter, you can see it already scattered this tile mesh on top of the surface. There's one thing you have to notice is, that, is like the number of the particles. So you always want to use the exactly same number to scatter the particles. Otherwise, you can see there's a lot of gaps between the scatters. And also, we have to open the advanced system, which it will provide the rotation function for us. So we can rotate the direction to normal. And after that, you have to manually adjust the mesh direction to make it more reasonable, more to get the direction you want, like here. So this too has this has to be in the element, not the object level. And you can also make a scale change in the uh, scale setting. So here we have basically a tile mesh that we want. And after that, we will try to create some random effect on top of that, make it more reasonable, more realistic. So here in the rotation setting and also the scale value, I will bring the randomness value into that. Just like very small minimum change on top of that, it will increase the effect. So next, we want to create a random color for each tile, which is very easy, just uh, using the object info node and uh, pick the randomness hook to the uh, color ramp node, which means it will pick the random color on the ramp and uh, put the color back into the black uh, base color. So here we can see we have the effect that we want. This is pretty decent result to be fair. If you want to create some like no matter it's stylist or it's just realistic. If you want to use a realistic effect, you just need to create a realistic tile mesh and scatter it on top of that. And after that, we'll look at how to create a same effect by using geometry nodes, which I think is more advanced or more useful if you have like multiple rooftop or very large sense you can use this technology. As usual, we will delete the top and the bottom surface for the cylinder, which means like it will avoid you to spawn or to scatter a tail mesh on that surface. We just want to scatter the tail mesh around the cylinder, not on top of that. And we also created some like subdivision on the vertical vertical side. So we assign the color which will make our observation more easier. And here we create a geometry nodes and just create a new node tree. So the one will the one node we will use to scatter the mesh is like this, is mesh to point node, which it transfer every poly on the surface 
to a point. And second, you just drag the mesh you want to scatter, bring it into the geometry node and use the instance mesh to each point. So you can scatter every mesh on every point. So here you can see the direction is a little bit off. So you have to do some settings on top of that, which is a little bit tricky. That's the major challenge for this method. So here I will bring the normal node and uh, transfer the value. So the value or the info I transferred, which will basically pick up the uh, original geometry normal, which is a cylinder normal, and put it back to the rotation vector. But here you can see the vector is a little bit off because it's not like traditional vector for the surface. So we have to do another tricky node, which is called Euler to vector. So here you can see by tweaking those changes, it converts the Euler angle to the vector angle that we need for scatter mesh. And in the geometry node, you don't need to manually tweak the original geometry direction by just by just add a vertical mesh node so you can do rotate as you want. So this is very basic like vector plus vector function. So you can figure out which vector you want to rotate and then add the value on that vector. And you have the result that you want. And the last thing for this method is just bring some random value on top of that. So here, I create a random value and uh, convert that to vector and bump that value into the scale value and the rotation value. So you have basically the same random effect like the particle system. Just be reminded for this like randomness value, you don't need to too big. You always start small. Uh, you always start with small values, like very minimum, like 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or something. So you don't have a crazy result at the beginning. So you can just manually take a little bit, so you can have a very decent result from that. Uh, one tips that I didn't do here because like, so as you may know, this is vector to vector method, but if you create a float value, it can be also used for vector method because the float value can convert to like each separate value for each, for the vector for x, y, for x, y, z. They basically have shared the same value for float node. And at last, as we just did what we did exactly for the first tile, uh, we create a shader and uh, bring the random color to that shader. So here we have the color ramp setting and just connect to the base color, you have the result. I think it worth to be noticed that uh, they both have some pretty decent result, but they both have pros and cons, right? For the particle system, if you use that, it's pretty handy, like pretty easy for setting. And uh, you can also use the particle brush for that if you want to, for the let's say for the further exchange. But the downside is like you couldn't just copy that uh, particle to another geometry that you want to scatter, right? And also if you modify the original geometry, you can see here, because the vertex value, the vertex amount changes. So you have to retweak the setting to make it suitable for the scatter. Otherwise you, have ha you will have those bad gaps. But in your geometry nodes, we don't have that problem. And also if you have like, for example, you have a big sense, you have multiple meshes you need to scatter. So you can just basically 
copy the geometry node that you that you created and paste into that geometry node so you have the same result and they all have like independent value for each geometry node you can tweak so they can have different setting on the geometry node you see here i create another mesh and uh, copy the geometry node on top of that and it creates the same effect as we want Lastly, I was just doing uh, expose value or value exposure function for that. So you can take the setting in the modifier, not just in the geometry node. So here, if you back to the modifier, geometry node modifier, you have the setting that you want to take, which is pretty handy if some other one someone else like to use your geometry node it's very easy to approach for what they need okay so this is basically the tutorial uh, if you like it or find it useful uh, please give me a thumbs up and share to someone who needs it and thank you very much that's pretty much all